Brad, thank you. We're grateful for you and for BB&T's support. Next, we welcome Adam Beckerman. Adam is a partner with Habeth, Arigetti, and Wynn, H-A-N-W. Uh, in this part of the program, historically, we found out the latest trends, data, what's happening out there so you can better plan what to expect. So please join me in welcoming from H-A-N-W, Adam Beckerman. Good morning. My name is Adam Beckerman, and I am the Manufacturing and Distribution Practice Group Leader at Haber Farragetti & Wynn. With over 60 years of practice, HNW is the largest independent accounting firm in the state of Georgia. On behalf of all the partners and staff at HNW, I congratulate the great Georgia manufacturing companies represented here today, and it is my honor to speak with you. The U.S. has lost its manufacturing dominance. U.S. can't compete in a global environment. U.S. manufacturing continues to shed jobs. Unfortunately, for many years, these are the headlines splashed across our daily newspapers. Today, I would like to tell you why I think the headlines should read, U.S. market shines brighter for manufacturers. U.S. manufacturers poised for a renaissance. The U.S. manufacturing renaissance is off and running and more and more manufacturing jobs are being brought back to the U.S. and companies are ramping up innovation by incubating new products, services, and internal processes. There are three main reasons behind this renaissance. Rising foreign wages, weakening dollar, and energy production. Over the last several years, the cost benefits that once existed for manufacturing products overseas have diminished. And today, the gap between the cost to produce products overseas versus in America is closing at a very rapid rate, as those countries that were once developing are now developed. This has led to rising wages for workers. In fact, it is estimated that labor costs in China are rising nearly 15% per year. Recently, the Wall Street Journal reported that Malaysia's cabinet approved the country's first ever minimum wage, finding the implementation of wages in other regional competitor countries like Thailand and Indonesia, who are trying to follow in China's footsteps and boost pay after years of a widening gap between the rich and the poor. This move has raised manufacturing costs for companies doing business and manufacturing globally. Second, the weakening dollar makes U.S. goods more attractive to foreign buyers. As we all know, the dollar has fallen by nearly one-third over the past decade against basket of currencies, including the euro, British pound, and yen. Third is energy production. Energy production is booming in the U.S., and domestic natural gas prices have recently plunged. This gives an edge to U.S. producers of fabricated steel, transportation equipment, machinery, and chemicals, all of which use natural gas extensively. And the statistics prove it. For 32 months, manufacturing has expanded and most recently contributed to 37,000 of the 120,000 U.S. jobs added in March. That accounts for 31% of total U.S. job growth. It is also interesting to note that many of today's manufacturers report that they see greater productivity from their U.S. plants over those located overseas due to language barriers, work being done in various time zones, high rates of turnover, and training costs. A recent study conducted by Manufacturing.com found that in the fourth quarter of 2011, for North American consumers, 22% of companies returned a portion of their production to North America from a low-cost country. That's the highest percentage that's been reported since the fourth quarter of 2010. A survey conducted among attendees to the Next Generation Manufacturing event held last October, which many of you may have attended, found that of Georgia manufacturers in attendance, 74% indicated that they themselves were hiring more employees inside the U.S. than outside, and 35% agreed that they are bringing manufacturing jobs back to their U.S. facilities and offices from other countries. And it's not only U.S. companies moving back. A recent survey done by the Global Retail Manufacturers and Importers Survey found that 50% of importers to the U.S. have moved some of their manufacturing outside of China and another one-third are considering doing the same. The same survey asked which country's manufacturer is being moved to and the U.S. was second only to Vietnam with 28% citing the U.S. Our great state of Georgia continues to be a significant benefactor of this renaissance. Whether it is NCR, which opened a new facility in Columbus last year, where it determined it made better financial sense to, op to open up the plant and to produce the same goods in Brazil, China, or Hungary, or Made Solar, whose CEO had this to say about finding the perfect home in central Georgia. 
We are certain that we have found the perfect home for our company based on the excellent infrastructure, impressive workforce known for its productivity, integrity, and skill, and a keenly business-oriented leadership who during the whole process never lost focus on what is best for the state of Georgia, Lawrence County, and the city of Dublin. So all of this is great news for Georgia. Over the next five years, Georgia is poised to be a winner in the onshoring game because of our trained labor force, manufacturing heritage, and our transportation advantages like the world's busiest airport and the port in Savannah. Hey, before I get in, Wynn is a proud sponsor and founder of Next Generation Manufacturing. I would like to invite each of you to stop by the Next Generation Manufacturing or Hey, before I get in, Wynn booth to drop off your business card and enter a chance to win an Apple iTouch. If you are not familiar with the Next Generation Manufacturing, please stop by to learn more about our October 16th event to be held at Georgia Tech. Thank you very much.